Hey guys, this is Steven from the Green Engineers, and I wanted to give you guys, uh, I wanted to be more um, present on uh, my YouTube and also my website. So uh, I wanted to give you guys some more, instead of just pictures of updates and stuff, I wanted to also give you in video form when I had a major update. So um, here um, we have the sensor that I finally finished for the dimensional control and I will show you guys how this works. So here I have an Arduino Uno clone in the multi-extruder itself. So this is the diameter control for the multi-extruder and later on the fill factory will also use probably the same sensor. And this is an Arduino Uno clone on the um, on the multi-extruder it runs a, a, Me a Mega, Arduino Mega, and then on the fill, on the fill factory it's gonna run a ramps board on an Arduino Mega as well. So. Um, basically, uh, this guy is running this sensor. I had to go through a whole bunch of sensors to find this right sensor. And this is a Borns 3046-502L503. So what that means is that this guy is a 100K, I believe, resistor. This is a potentiometer, and it's called an LMP, Linear Motion Potentiometer. Basically what that means is it has a potentiometer on the inside, a slide potentiometer, and it's this little blue thing here. Slide potentiometer, and then on the outs on the inside, there's a shaft with a little um, piece machined into it. And when it moves, it moves back and forth the slider that will then put an out uh, it will then output an analog signal to this guy. And what it does is it basically you feed it positive five volt and negative five volt. And what it will do is, it, as you go from zero to 100k resistance, it will vary. It has, is using something called a voltage divider uh, configuration, where, or I have it currently wired in a voltage di voltage divider configuration, where zero volts is zero travel and five volts is full travel. So by using that, you're able to look at the um, basically how uh, how far you're moved. Oh how far you're moving and uh, you can see it's plugged in here um, and so here I didn't mean to drop it but here you can see that uh, it has a spring action so there's the shaft and the shaft is going into this arm here and then we have a tiny little 8 millimeter OD bearing ball bearing in there with a pin pushed through this board here same thing here we have a pin pushed through the board with the same bearing in there then right here we have a high, um, I didn't want it to be as high of a compression spring, but it's a, um, it's a high tension, it's a high, it's a high force, um, or a high K, I guess you could say, high spring constant spring, um, tiny little spring there. So what that does is that causes this guy to return back, because normally this bar in there, the, um, the potentiometer bar that's in this linear motion potentiometer from Borns, We'll just go back and forth and it won't return. So what I did is I just put a spring over top of that bar and so now it will return. So now you can see that you have a motion like this. And it travels, the maximum travels about four millimeters, which will measure any of the filaments that you want to run on the filament maker, whether you want to run 1.75, 3 mil, uh, or 3 mil, or something in between, something custom. So I have a program running on here. Basically what I did is at my work at the machine shop, I ran um, a software piece in order to, I mean, I, I basically set it up to read the analog number, which varies between zero and 1023. And then I put in a precision ground pin in here, known as gauge pins. And so at work he has one thou increment gauge pins from 11 thou to one inch. So I tried, um, I just I just did two, uh, 1.75 and three mil, and I will explain why I did that. Be the reason why I did that is because I already tested it on one of his precision CNC mills before I put it into this apparatus. So what I did is I mounted this guy in the jaws of the mill, let me bring this thing over, mounted this guy in the jaw, the blue one, into the jaws of the mill, and I bumped the mill head after I put a shaft in there. I pushed the mill head, uh, I pushed the spindle with that with a dowel pin in there. And I pushed this guy in, and I used the digital um, 
the digital readout on the mill itself to um, after a certain number of increments I took 30 increments and I took the data of the ADC value between 0 and 1023 and the distance that the mill traveled after I first got a reading so first it started at 0 ADC uh, the ADC value between 0 and 1023 once it went to 1 I zeroed the machine and then I pr uh, began to move that uh, that test allowed me to test the repeatability uh, the resolution which is basically from um, when you have like 120 120 ADC value and 121 ADC value how far uh, is that movement in inches or millimeters with this with this bar here and so I was able to tell that I was able to tell the repeatability if I leave the mill away and pull the shaft all the way out and return to the same distance, do I get the same reading and how many times can I do that and how much does it vary? And um, yeah, so mainly resolution. I got a scale to see mainly what I was looking for to see if the, if the sensor was linear, if the sensor had any sort of weird humps or anything like that, that was going to be a bad day because my last sensor I tested was not linear. This one was so it was extremely linear and I'll, if I have some time I'll show you guys the the graphs of it and um, so I went and proceeded to uh, put it into this this uh, holder here proceeded to super glue uh, the shaft in there after you put the spring on it and then uh, put the shaft in there with the bearings and now I did some testing and so I only tested it with 1.75 mil and 3 mil and again indeed is perfectly linear so uh, super excited to get this guy running. So what I have here is I basically plotted, or I did a basic equation, uh, a linear approximation, rise and run of this graph. So how much rise does it need to go from 1.75 to 3, and how much run, and the run is the ADC value. And then I figured out the slope, the slope was like 0 0.0035. So that that is actually your resolution. So the resolution of this sensor is uh, three tenths of a millimeter. So that means that it takes three values to go up. Uh, sorry, three hundredth of a not a thousandth. No, is it? Yeah, it's three thousandths. It's three thousandths of a millimeter. Three and a half thousandths of a millimeter is the resolution of this guy. So it takes three ADC values to read one hundredth of a millimeter, which is my target resolution. And the reason why I targeted that is so if there's any problem with the sensor. I have a little bit of wiggle room before it messes up my reading. If it was one hundredth of a reading and I had a two, an issue of like it was, it was actually floating two values up or down, it's going to throw off my, my, my actual size by a lot. But here I'm able to keep it really, really tight. So resolution is three, thousand, three and a half thousandths of a millimeter. Um, repeatability is about um, plus or minus was it one tenth, uh, one tenth of an inch, which is probably again about three about uh, three thousandths of a millimeter, three and a half thousandths of a millimeter is repeatability, um, and it's so it's very repeatable, very high resolution, very accurate, and now I have the formula put into a sketch, a simple sketch to read this, and I have a serial output outputting here. I have a piece of ABS one point seven five. I'm going to just push down at the same time that I'm opening this thing up. I'm going to put that filament in there. I'm going to kind of roll it down so it sets. And we're going to look here what it says. It says here 1.74, 1.75. Let me see if I could, let me see if I could, I'll detach this for you guys. Let me pick it up because see how it's leaning on the table? So let me, it's, it dropped down. Um, whenever it touches on the table it kind of likes to so I'm just moving it back and forth here okay that's, that's what I'm gonna go with and you see here it says 1.75 yep. Time out. Okay, it timed out for a second. There you go. 
1.75. If you could see that. All right, so I mean that's pretty much all I have time for. Um, this camera tends to break up videos every um, 11 and a half minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys one last look around this sensor. So this guy, I'm gonna buy a whole bunch of these. These are uh, pretty cheap for how precise they are, so I'm gonna buy a whole, and how linear and how accurate they are. So I'm gonna buy a whole bunch of these and put them onto the multi-shooter machine and also the fill factory. I think it's my go-to sensor. Super excited, so uh, yeah. Uh, go ahead and stay tuned for more updates like this. Um, I hope to do a lot more in the future. And uh, thank you guys so much uh, for watching. And please subscribe for more updates. And uh, I will talk to you guys later. Take it easy. Peace.